This is that hop on California sound. We never water it down. Raised by the block, we was hate. Hi. Let me ask the audience a question. Did you ever lie as a child? If you did, could you please raise your hand? Wow, this is the most honest group of people I've ever met. <laughs> so for the last 20 years, I've been studying how children learn to tell lies, and today I'm going to show with you some of the discoveries that we have made. But to begin, I'm going to tell you a story from Mr. Richard Massina, who is my friend and the elementary school principal. He got a phone call one day. The caller says. Mr. Messina, my son Johnny will not come to school today because he's sick. Ms. Messina asks, "Who am I speaking to, please?" And the caller says, "I am my father." <laughs> so this story sums up very nicely three common beliefs we have about children and lying. One. Children only come to tell lies after entering elementary school. Two, children are poor liars. We adults can easily detect their lies. And three, if children lie at a very young age, there must be some character flaws with them, and they are going to be become pathological liars for life. Well, it turns out all the three beliefs are wrong. And when you're when you're a creator, like you know, just on the you know just on the come up, trying to figure out like oh, how come nobody likes me or how come I can't connect with nobody, is because we're not being real with ourselves. Because you know what I mean like a lot of we're trying to first of all you know we're trying to put up this you know put up this front like hey, like you should listen to me. I'm trying to you know I'm gonna lead you the right way. I'm gonna bring you to salvation. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna take away your sins, and pretty much like we're gonna get on this submarine, and we're gonna we're gonna go see the Titanic, and like you don't even know that I like like I'm using an Xbox controller to you know move this thing, and and yeah, like you're gonna at the end of the day you're just gonna be like, dude, why'd you take me with you? And I'm gonna be like, I'm to be honest, like I, I don't know, dude, I'm sorry. You see what I mean? Like. You see, I mean, they should have had Mr. Beast really. They should have had Mr. Beast do the whole submarine thing. I don't even think Mr. Beast would have done it. To be honest, because I think he would. I think he's a little bit more smarter than that. But I'm just saying. Not related, but yeah. We have been playing guessing games with children all over the world. So here's an example. So in this game, we ask children to guess the numbers on the cards, and we tell them if they win the game, they are going to get a big prize. But in the middle of the game, we make an excuse and leave the room. And before we leave the room, we tell them not to peek at the cards. Of course, we have hidden cameras in the room to watch their every move. Because the desire to win the game is so strong, more than 90 percent of children would peek as soon as we leave the room. The crucial question is, when we return and ask the children whether or not they have peaked, will the children who peaked confess or lie about their transgression? We found that, that uh, regardless of gender, country, religion, at two years of age, 30 percent lie, 70 percent tell the truth about their transgression. At three years of age. 50% lie, and 50% tell the truth. At four years of age, more than 80% lie. <laughs> and after four years of age, most children lie. So as you can see, lying is really a typical part of development. And some children begin to tell lies as young as two years of age. So now let's take a closer look at the younger children. Why some but not all young children lie? As in cooking, you need good ingredients to cook good food, and good lying requires 
two key ingredients. The first key ingredient is theory of mind, or the mind reading ability. My reading is ability to know that different people have a different knowledge about the situation, and the ability to differentiate between what I know and what you know. My reading is important for lying, is because the basis of lying is that I know, you don't know what I know. Therefore, I can lie to you. The second key ingredient for good lying is self-control. It is ability to control your speech, your facial expression, and your body language, so that you can tell a convincing lie. And we found that those young children who have more advanced mind reading and self-control abilities tell lies earlier and are more sophisticated liars. As it turns out, these two abilities are also essential for all of us to function well in our society. In fact, deficits、like、in mind reading and self-control abilities are associated with serious developmental problems such as ADHD and autism. So, if you discover your two-year-old is telling his or her first lie, instead of being alarmed. You should celebrate, <laughs> because it signals that your child has arrived at a new milestone of typical development. Now, are children poor liars? Do you think you can easily detect their lies? Would you like to give it a try? <laughs> yes. Okay. So I'm going to show you two videos. In the videos, the children are going to respond to a. Personally, do you think that you can tell if a child, like a child, is lying to you? For me, I always thought, like, yeah, you know what I mean. But it's kind of different, and I used to think that, like, yeah, nobody will know if I'm lying or not, right? Only I know my truth. These people don't know me. I can hide my facial expressions. I used to think that. Which child is lying and which child is telling the truth? So here's child number one. Are you ready? Did you peek? No. And this is child number two. Did you peek? No. Okay. If you think child number one is lying, please raise your hand. If you think child number two is lying, please raise your hand. Okay, so as a matter of fact, child number one is telling the truth. Child number two is lying. Looks like many of you are terrible detectors of children's lies. <laughs> Now, we have played a similar kind of games with many, many adults from all walks of life. And、uh, we show them many videos. In half of the videos, the children lied. In the other half of the videos, children told the truth. And let's find out how these adults perform. Because there are as many liars as truth tellers. So if you guess randomly, there's a 50% chance you're going to get it right. So if your accuracy is around 50%. It means you are terrible detectors of children's lies. Okay, so let's start with、uh, undergrads and law school students who typically have limited experience with children. No, they cannot detect children's lies. Their performance is around chance. Now, how about social workers and child protection lawyers who work with children on a daily basis? Can they detect children's lies? No, they cannot. <laughs> What about judges, custom officers, and、uh, police officers who deal with liars on a daily basis? Can they detect children's lies? No, they cannot. <laughs> What about parents? Can parents detect others' children's lies? No, they cannot. <laughs> What about can parents detect their own children's lies? No, they cannot. <laughs> So now you may ask, 
why children's lies are so difficult to detect. So let me illustrate this with my own son Nathan. So this is his facial expression when he lies. <laughs> so when children lie, their facial expression is typically neutral. However, behind this neutral expression, the child is actually experiencing a lot of emotions, such as fear, guilt, shame, and maybe a little bit of liar's delight. <laughs> Unfortunately. Such emotions are either fleeting or hidden; therefore, is mostly invisible to us. So, in the last five years, we have been trying to figure out a way to reveal these hidden emotions. Then we made a discovery. We know that underneath our facial skin, there is a rich network of blood vessels. When we experience different emotions, our facial blood flow changes subtly, and these. Changes are regulated by the autonomic system that is beyond our conscious control. So, by looking at facial blood flow changes, we can reveal people's hidden emotions. Unfortunately, such emotion-related facial blood flow changes are too subtle to detect by our naked eye. So, to help us reveal people's facial emotions, we have developed. A This is what I was talking about, right? So is he's about to get into it, like how we can tell, and this is like I said, this video was made seven years ago. So this technology is not new. People experience various hidden emotions, and then using our image processing technology, we can extract transdermal images of facial blood flow changes, and by looking at transdermal video images. Now we can easily see transdermal facial blood flow changes associated with various hidden emotions, and using this technology, we can now reveal the hidden emotion associated with lying, and therefore detect people's lies. We can do so non-invasively, remotely, inexpensively, with an accuracy at about 85 percent, which is far better than chance level. And in addition, we discovered a Pinocchio effect. No, not this Pinocchio effect. <laughs> this is the real Pinocchio effect. Whoa! What? What? Alright, so like I said, I'm not, I'm not like trying to freak you out. I'm not trying to tell you like, oh, dude, don't ever lie again. People are gonna know. People might not know. Like I said, there's people who are successful on YouTube and they're lying. They're like lying their asses off. Some people are really good at it. But like I said, do you want to build a foundation of your community based on someone who you're not or someone who you are? Because if you're trying to do this for someone like you're not, you're gonna end up with a whole audience. That doesn't know you, and that you don't connect with, and not just that, you're building a foundation based upon a lie. Like you can get easily, like that can get taken away from you. That means that you didn't earn your way to the top. You didn't earn. You didn't earn this. You cheated. Like you, you took a shortcut. You cheated your way to get to the, you know, to get to the top. When if you're being authentic, you're, you're being true to yourself, true to. Your beliefs, true to what you want to share, true, and just being, you know, just being authentic. That's when you can really say that, like, yeah, I built this on honor. I built this platform because I wanted it to be somewhere where we can be transparent and talk about anything we want. And then it doesn't matter if it's like, you know, it doesn't matter in a way like. What somebody did and stuff like that. It's like, it's like you know, if if you're going, if you're feeling that way, then you know, just you know, you can say that, say that you're feeling that way. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I can't lie anymore, right? Like I said, I can't lie anymore. <laughs> After watching this video, I suggest you make videos that are just straight up transparent and straight up honest, because I think it'll also make work easier. 
Because a lot of times when you're lying, you have to edit your lie. You know what I mean? You ever... I mean, not just... I'm not talking about just being... Not not just being a liar, but also when you're not being honest. Or, you're, you know what I mean? Like, or there's something about you that's just like... You know you, don't, you know you don't act like that in real life. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm not using this whole technology thing as a... And I'm not, like, you know, I'm not claiming that this is the reason why you're not successful or I'm not successful on YouTube. But it is a big indication of... It tells it's telling us like man maybe we should be more real with ourselves and that's probably why we're not getting picked up when you know whenever you see somebody like start taking off on youtube there's this thing about them there's this thing about like you know in their aura like they, they look so like excited and it almost looks fake too it almost looks fake but really what it is is that they tapped in they finally tapped into who they really are and they're like oh Okay, this is what I have to offer. This is what I can tell you. I don't have to, like, come up with these words or I don't have to, you know, I don't have to, like, you know, study something for, like, you know, an hour and then try to BS my ass off trying to convince you that I know how to plant trees and how to plant tomatoes. I don't, I honestly don't know how to do that stuff. I can never, I can never uh teach you on that unless like probably i learned about it for like you know six months or something but other than that it's like you know i there's no point like dude why are you trying to teach me how to make tomatoes you don't make tomatoes why why should i listen to you you don't make tomatoes you make youtube videos fair that's fair so it's like wh what can i what what can you tell me about i guess i can tell you about technology <laughs> i can tell you about technology i can tell you about videos i can tell you about the human psychology <laughs> and pretty much yeah like the things that i share the things that i share are things that i know are they can be beneficial to you if um i mean not if but they can be beneficial to you regardless even if you think that you're being real on YouTube, if you think you're being real with yourself, if you think you're being real with people around you, you know, just, you know, just being, just being over, overly outspoken, I guess you can say, doesn't make you authentic. That's what I used to think. I used to think that, oh, telling, you know, just being outspoken and, you know, being unapologetic. I used to think that's what authentic means, but that's not authentic. Even though it's people who are unapologetic are sometimes, you know, being true to themselves, it doesn't mean that they're being authentic. You know what I mean? Think about that. When people lie, the facial blood flow on the cheeks decreases and the facial blood flow on the nose increases. Of course, lying is not the only situation that will evoke our hidden emotions. So then we ask ourselves, in addition to detecting lies, how can our technology be used? One application is in education. For example, using this technology, we can help this mathematics teacher to identify the student in his classroom who may experience high anxiety about the topic he's teaching so that he can help him. And also, we can use this in healthcare. For example, Every day, I Skype my parents who live thousands of miles away. And using this technology, I can not only find out what's going on in their lives, but also simultaneously monitor their heart rate, their stress level, their mood, and whether or not they are experiencing pain. And perhaps in the future, there are risks for heart attack or hypertension. And you may ask, can we use this also to reveal politicians' emotions. <laughs> For example, during a debate. Well, the answer is yes. Using TV footages, we could detect the politicians' heart rate, mood and stress, and perhaps in the future, whether or not they are lying to us. We can also use this in marketing research, for example, to find out whether or not people like certain consumer products. 
We can even use it in dating. So, for example, if your date is smiling at you, this technology can help you to determine whether she actually likes you or she's just trying to be nice to you. And in this case, she's just trying to be nice to you. <laughs> so, transdermal optical imaging technology is at the very early stage of development. Many new applications will come about that we don't know today. However, one thing I know for sure is that lying will never be the same again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Like you said, lying will never be the same again. So I hope I really hope like you know you got something from this. I know it's a pretty long video, and you know I'm just talking head. But yeah, I you know that's one one after watching this video, it made me want to be more real with not just not just like my audience, but it just made me want to be more real with myself. Like you know, like I I want to be more real. And not that I haven't, you know, kept it, you know, not not that I've been bullshitting all this time, but just, just like you know, I just want to, I just want to be more honest about, like, you know, this approach, because if I really want this to be my career, if I'm really, want, if I really want this to be like, you know, something that's gonna make me, not necessarily rich, but it's gonna give me a way of, you know, to survive, to pay the bills. Then yeah, it's time to face the music. The technology is there, bro. The technology is there, and yeah, like why should why should an algorithm push you higher into the you know into the freaking like why would your content be good if you're just full of shit? Don't get me wrong, these people. Like I said, it does, this doesn't mean that telling the truth always is gonna make you successful. But what I'm saying is that. And then, you know, I'm also saying that just because you're lying doesn't mean you're not going to make it. Also, like I said, there's a lot of freaking liars on here. But it's all about more of your... Because they're all... Ref even without all the technology, put all that aside. It all goes back... It all goes back to you. As a person. Are you being real with yourself? Are you lying to yourself? The, and one thing that my big homie shout out to his channel is right here shout out to Pari Young one thing that he he um that he uh really instilled in me when I first when I first found his content and you know I actually I'm actually like friends with him just I never really seen him in person cuz uh he lives in the Philippines and but we you know we've chatted before like on uh Facebook and uh you know we had video messaging before on Facebook you know what I mean? Like, this dude, this dude is like, he was in jail for like 14, 15 years. This dude knows, he knows like the human mind, like, like it's crazy. Like, he told me straight up, like, you need to stop lying to yourself. And I was like, what do you, what do you, what do you mean by that? And he's like, you just need to stop lying to yourself, bro. Like, he's like, he's like, bro, I was in jail for like 15 years. And I, I you know, I still can't believe that there's people that are in jail still trying to lie to themselves. He's like when you he's like when I stopped lying to myself, that's when I realized that like, you know, fuck this place. I'm getting out of here. You know what I mean? And he got out of there. And that's really like, you know, if you try to put a cherry on top of this whole video, it's like we might be in the prison ourselves. We might be in some kind of jail, some kind of cage, and we want to break out. But how can we break out if we're lying to ourselves? You know what I mean? Good news travels fast you ever heard of that good news travels fast and that's hope that really opens your mind to like you know how algorithms kind of work and how you can improve not just you know your video just you as a person how you can stop you know putting up a front or stop having to you know, just be dishonest in a way because your life doesn't benefit from it on YouTube or in life. Your life will only benefit by you just being yourself. 
And by you being yourself, I think that's what makes people want to be with you, want to be on your team, want to be on your side. You know, like, nah, that's my dude right there. He's solid. I'm on his side. So, let's go. If you want, if you're on my side, let's do it. Let's just let's stop, let's stop bullshitting and really start doing this shit. If you're on my side, you're not subscribed. Get on my side. I got you. I hope you got something out of this, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace, love, God bless. With my mind gone, I swear I'ma need a fucking lease for my brain. Los Angeles. Yeah, lay with them gangsters, go.